We are honored to have Dr. Lisa Sue here because you really put it together. I want to know how you were able to have such giant expansion in gross margins and also kill the revenues because typically we wouldn't get both. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be here this morning, Jim. And I would say, look, we're very happy with how um, the quarter went and how the year started. You know, for us, it's really about our long term strategy paying off. Uh, we're all about high performance products, and we saw a nice ramp across our product lines, um, across our PCs, gaming, and data center product lines. And so that gave us the, uh, the top line as well as the uh, bottom line beat. Uh, let's talk about gaming for a second. Yeah, some very big wins. And uh, you're really talking about esports. You're actually addressing the exciting market. To me, that versus data center, I don't know which one is better. You're betting, you're betting on both, though. We absolutely are. And I view it as, you know, these are large, growing markets that need high-performance computing. Um, gaming is a great market. I mean, there are lots and lots of gamers out there, um, from the casual gamers to the, you know, to the real enthusiast gamers. And we're addressing that entire segment. But, you know, data center, I mean, you know, th this is where, you know, everyone needs more power in the cloud. So they're, they're really great market segments that we're a part of. All right. You went there in the Q&A and I loved it. You talked blockchain, didn't talk crypto per se. I'm going to say there's a lot of currencies. Good growth, but it seemed like you're going to temper your uh, growth expectations. But this is a market you say is here to stay. Yeah, you know, the way I think about blockchain is it's a very important technology. I mean, if you think about it, the idea that you can do, you know, all of this peer-to-peer -peer transactions, decentralized network, it's a good technology. But I think it's been a bit of a distraction, frankly, in the short term. And so, you know, what we wanted to say is, look, you know, we know how the market works. They need our products, but, you know, let's not get distracted. We have a great growth story here across a number of different markets, and you know, we want to make sure that people focus on the core markets. Do you think it's uh, temporary in nature? Why why would it be a distraction and not a more reliable uh, avenue of future growth? No, I think what I would say is people are watching sort of the day-to-day, -day, you know, what Bitcoin does and thinking that that somehow, you know, relates to our day-to-day -day sales. And I would say it doesn't. You know, the, the long-term technology around blockchain is an important technology. And we're spending a lot of time with some of the key influencers in this area. So I think it'll be here for the next three, four, five years. Now, what it does, you know, tomorrow versus yesterday, you know, I think that's anyone's, uh, anyone's guess. Specific to that, though, some of the analysts are taking issue, at least, with what they believe is um, an outsized contribution from uh, Ethereum mining, so to speak, for the quarter. Uh, Susquehanna, I'm looking at a research report this morning from here. GPU purchases through the retail channel, they believe, are being grossly underestimated at the company. They say they're at least 23% of your first quarter 18 revenue. Can you give us some guidance on whether that's true or not? Yeah, absolutely. We gave some guidance that uh, we believe uh, blockchain or, you know, uh, mining was about, you know, approximately 10% of our revenue in the quarter. And, you know, the truth is um, there are a lot of different factors in these uh, in these estimates. So, you know, we feel we have um, a very good idea of um, what uh, people are using our products for. And so, you know, it's a, um, it's a nice growth factor, but it's certainly not the dominant growth factor in our story. So those who would say you're going to have an Ethereum-related GPU hangover in the second half, what do you say to them? I say that uh, we have a great set of products across PCs, gaming, and data center. These are our core markets, and uh, we believe that uh, we're going to gain market share in the second half of the year. I Why? Think. The products are very strong and our customers are actually uh, increasing adoption. So there's like an adoption rate that you go through, particularly in the data center. And so they are um, doing proof of concepts of products right now that will go into you know, second half, you know, large volume production. So we really feel good about where the core markets are. Okay, so Lisa, this is, uh, I want people to know the arc here. You came in with a very unprofitable company. You turned it into profitable. Now it's extremely profitable. Now that you have those numbers, future cash flow, I saw you bought back a little bit of debt. Is the idea to pay down that debt to become, have a really great balance sheet? You know, um, Jim, we are absolutely on a journey um, with AMD. I think we're in the, you know, let's call it the third or fourth inning of what we're doing. Um, I'm very happy with the profitability. I think that will expand as our margins expand. And yes, we will absolutely improve our balance sheet over time. And I think the idea is, you know, you need to invest when you have, you know, these very, very complex, you know, technologies. And we are, you know, investing in a way that, um, you know, we're improving the bottom line, but also improving our foundation. Well, I'm glad you, you put that uh, question you talked about the investment because you know you're going up against Intel, although you are partners in one line. You're going up against NVIDIA, which does have prepping a new high-end gaming graphical user. How do you go up and fight against Jensen Wong at NVIDIA and Brian Krasanich at Intel and their balance sheets? 
You know, the best way to think about it is high performance computing is a $75 billion market. $75 billion market, and we have an opportunity to address that entire market. So, you know, we actually believe our technology is very competitive. Uh, we're partnered with some of the leading edge foundries to make sure that we have great manufacturing capability. And uh, the fact is there's a need for many different solutions in the market. So our customers are telling us uh, they like our roadmap. Um, they're even more excited about what we have, you know, beyond 2018. Um, so I'm very, uh, very, you know, confident that we have an execution engine that will get there. I would think some of this, though, comes down to differentiation in terms of personnel and being able to find the best people. Uh, is it becoming more competitive? Are your costs potentially going to rise in terms of finding and paying the best people to, to, to keep that market share where it is and grow it? There's no question that in, in tech it's about talent and it's a, it's a talent war. Um, I would say that uh, you know, we have very, very strong talent. Um, it is very competitive, uh, particularly as we get to some of the machine learning and um, you know, AI type of markets uh, that we you know, believe are long-term growth markets. But you know, I think we also offer an opportunity to do something very, very special in the marketplace. So. Uh, question on CapEx, yes. uh, because we got durables today and some of the internals are not as strong as some expected post-tax reform. So I'm wondering, do you think that's still to come? Or how do you view that? You know, for us, we um, we really rely a lot on you know external partners from a manufacturing standpoint. So our capex is relatively uh, small, uh, relative to the size of the company. So yeah, no, I I think there's a lot more to come there. Did, did the expensing benefit change your view at all? Um, not from a standpoint of you know our primary investments are in design and you know design engineering, you know product engineering, and we really rely on um, our partnerships on the manufacturing side. Can we talk about wins? You you mentioned Dell, you mentioned HP, Lenovo. Who is new and who is taking more of your product line than uh, Intel's would? Yeah. So um, we have had a lot of new design wins. Um, I think we've always been relatively strong on the consumer side, but on the commercial side, um, adding HP, um, Dell, and uh, Lenovo on the commercial PCs, I think will uh, help our uh, second half of the year as those come out. Uh, we're very excited about the data center, and I think working with the big cloud data centers, uh, you know, Microsoft and Baidu have announced their uh, plans to uh, really ramp with our uh, new server product line, and we have a number of other cloud data center customers that we're working with that are yet unannounced. So those will come out later this year. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that too because there is a, a budding consensus that things have peaked in this group, that there's been so much money spent that it's got to pull back, uh, that PCs just had this momentary burst. Where are we secular growth versus cyclical in all those trends? Yeah, so I think uh, no question in the, um, the graphics and gaming markets and in the data center markets, those are secular growth. And we're seeing it you know, around, um, again, all of the, the usage models around graphics and gaming, we're seeing it in uh, machine learning, AI, those are secular growth and will continue for the next couple of years. Um, there are some segments that are, let's call it flattish. Um, you know, PCs have tended to be, let's call it low single digits down, maybe flattish. But from our standpoint, those are market share opportunities for us because we're relatively um, underrepresented, you know, in those segments today. All right, thank you, Dr. Lisa Su, President and CEO of Advanced Micro Devices. Thank you so much. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.